There once was a project to build a community-managed tap stand. Its planners hoped it would make life easier for everyone in the village. But after the project, the women of the village did not use it and went back to collecting water from a river far away. Despite male community leaders being trained in operation and maintenance, the project failed. What went wrong? To find out, you would need to ask the women, and involving them is what the planners should have done from the start. When the World Bank reviewed the fate of 121 water projects, they found that women's participation was key to a project's success, while not considering gender differences and inequalities, resulted in many failed projects. Gender sensitivity needs to be a part of every project, and it needs to be clearer and easier to do. That's why CRIDIF, the UK aid-funded Climate Resilient Infrastructure Development Facility, has developed the Gender Equality and Social Inclusion Toolkit for project preparation to improve gender analysis. Informed by the experiences of CRIDIF sociologists and a review of the SADC Handbook on Mainstreaming Gender in the Water Sector and the SADC Gender Mainstreaming Resource Kit, the CRIDIF Toolkit offers tools and approaches to ensure gender issues and the needs of vulnerable groups are integrated into the design of your water project. This starts before you go into the field. The first step is to identify studies and talk to people so that you can learn about research and actions that have already taken place in the local area or nearby. Next, you need to source disaggregated data to give you an understanding of differences and vulnerabilities within the community. Step three, stakeholder mapping, will help you to identify a range of perspectives from a diversity of people. This could include people from the beneficiary community, government, civil society, the private sector and research institutions. The broader you reach, the richer your analysis, so don't limit yourself to the water sector. All of this groundwork will inform a tailored survey approach that works for your field of investigation. Now it's time for step four, taking to the field for gender-aware consultations. Gender-aware means using approaches that enable meaningful participation by women and men. Details like the place, time of day, and seating arrangements for each consultation are key to ensuring that all groups feel comfortable sharing their views. An external checklist includes a list of possible questions you could ask around issues of access, participation, and preference. These should be adapted based on the specific project context. When the field work is complete, the tools you have used will make it easy to take the next step, producing a gender action plan. This will help identify what key actions to take who will take them and how to monitor progress towards gender equality and reduce vulnerability. The plan also needs to indicate the costs of these actions so that they are accounted for in project budgets. This process is called gender responsive budgeting. Using this approach, you will be able to produce a feasibility report where gender is more than just a separate section. Instead, it forms an integral part of the project preparation process and influences the final design. Following the steps in CRIDIF's toolkit makes all of this easier right from the first day of planning. Behind it is the philosophy of gender mainstreaming, one that acknowledges how women and men operate in different contexts, have different vulnerabilities, and play different roles in every project. For critic projects, like many others in SADC, they might be smallholder farmers using irrigation, informal traders in a border town, or household members with specific responsibilities in a flood management project. In the field, gender equality and social inclusion have many faces, but they share one goal to let everyone, especially the poorest and most vulnerable, be part of a water-secure future.